since I was a little girl, I always knew I wanted to be an artist. Ever since my elementary school teacher, she gave us the assignment to draw our favorite animal on a piece of paper, and I chose to draw a dog. And my three-year-old self knew from that very moment, from looking at that beautiful brown-eyed puppy in front of me, from remembering that my mom studied fashion, that I was born and destined to be putting beautiful things to paper for the rest of my life. So when that same teacher came to my desk and I was ready for my much-deserved praise, and she said to me, honey, a chocolate chip cookie is not an animal. <laughs> well, let's just say in that very moment, I knew I would never be an artist. So I must confess, I am not an artist. But over the past few years, I've been lucky enough to spend my time around artists. Artists like Movana Chen, who is pictured here in the top left, a Hong Kong artist who travels the world knitting conversations out of maps to learn about global communities and how we're all connected. Artists like Simon Birch, who is a contemporary artist and known for his moving portraits. And artists like John Franzen in the middle here, who draws each line with every breath he takes. And I noticed that every artist has something in common. I've been able to realize that they think a certain way, they create a certain way, and they question a certain way. The artistic mindset, the artist mindset, is so incredibly unique. But in realizing the artist's mindset, I've noticed that we currently live in a creative paradox. Six years ago, I chose to leave my home in New York to study at the University of Hong Kong. Firstly, everyone thought I was absolutely absurd for leaving America to study in Asia. But then when I chose to major in comparative literature with a minor in fine art and business, all hell broke loose. I was questioned weekly. You know, what is, why is that such a weird thing that you do? Business, art, it just doesn't make sense. It's such a weird combo. Why did you choose to do that? Well, to me, the why was obvious, and it wasn't weird at all. I loved you know, art and museums and paintings and seeing sculptures, but on the other hand, I also loved the idea of starting my own business, of human resources, and just a little bit of accounting. <laughs> so that leads me back to this creative paradox. I'd like you to think back to yourself. When was the last time that you were asked to be creative? to innovate, to think out of the box. You know, in these different everyday mindsets, we're questioned and we're called upon to be innovative and spark true ideas. So we might not all be artistically inclined, and that's okay. But what's not okay is for us to ignore the artist's mindset and the creations that create in a world that so ferociously craves innovation, ideas, and growth every single second. So what can us non-artistic humans do? Do we take a drawing class? Do we go to the theater? Perhaps see a ballet? I suggest that we can adopt this artist mindset to try and learn from it, to observe the art they create and see where their ideas come from, where their inspiration stems from. About a year ago, I was working with a startup named Gourmet. We were tasked to help an international insurance company reach its innovation targets. The company had flown about 30 of its regional managers to Hong Kong and tasked us to create an event that would help spark innovation. I suggested an art jamming session. Now you can imagine the lead manager thought I was a little bit out of my mind. You know, how can you ask a bunch of insurance managers to paint? But luckily, he was open enough and did let me you know, experiment with his team. So I brought in two very famous Hong Kong street artists, gave them all paint markers, and a white wooden plank. Each of the teams were tasked to create, and the only example they were given was to spark something that was creative, to paint what crossed their mind when they thought of insurance. Again, this might be a very difficult task, I know for me it would be. So by the end of the evening, the lead manager had asked each of the teams to take their works of art to the streets of Wan Chai and to sell those paintings. So you can see that while these wooden planks might not be beautiful works of art, they were pieces that each of the teams created on their own. And what resulted was the teams had a true idea of innovation. They created something that they built with their own hands in an environment that had completely no inhibitions. They were able to create and sell something that they related to. And in that very moment, they were able to find new ways to sell things that they had never sold before true innovation for an insurance agency. So artists don't always create with market research, and in that moment, the insurance agents didn't either. So step one of the artist's mindset, 
is to create with what you have, and perhaps not with all the evidence that you may need. For the second part of the artist's mindset, I look to Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama. Now, many of you might know of her. For those of you who don't, she's fam very famous for her polka dot works. She has an obsession with polka dots. But the stemming, the origination of the, those polka dots come from her troubles and hallucinations. Most famously, she, was spe she spent decades in a psychiatric institution. So what can she teach us? She sees the world in polka dots. More specifically, this is how she sees Mount Fuji. So through her new perspective, what she's able to teach us is that not everyone sees the world in black and white. The person sitting next to you might see the world completely different than you might see it yourself. And everyone sees different colors, different gray areas. And through her reframing of her medical diagnosis, she was able to gain a new perspective. That new perspective challenges us every day. It challenges us to see the world from our clients, from our customers, from our patients, from everyone around us and who we're trying to influence, help, or create. This work is called When Life Boundlessly Flares to the Universe. So step two in adopting the artist's mindset is that you should, sorry, to, is that you should look at the world with a different perspective and perhaps question the things around you. So I hope that when looking at this work, when life boundlessly flares to the universe, you let those new perspectives boundlessly flare to your own universe. Now part three of the artist's mindset. I look to my previous boss and mentor, Simon Birch. Now much like Kusama, Simon Birch struggled with cancer. And he told us about how, just on this very TEDx stage actually, how his medical di diagnosis helped him become the artist that he is today. But what I'd like to focus on instead is his innate nature to collaborate. A few years ago, Simon and I were walking um, the Occupy Central and the Umbrella Movement. And then Simon is quite a famous Hong Kong artist. So we were walking the street and a young student passed by and said, oh my god, that's Simon Birch. So then Simon turned around and said, hi, what's your name? And what Simon did in that very moment showed his true nature of choosing to collaborate with the community and artistic community around him, no matter how unexperienced or experienced you are. He asked the student's name, he asked their address. The artist student said that he was so inspired by Simon that Simon inspired him to become an artist himself. But unfortunately, he couldn't afford paint, he couldn't afford canvases. So Simon asked me to take his address, to ship him as much paint and as much canvases as he needed, and once that student was done with that artwork, to send it back to Simon's studio to see how we can work with it and how Simon could get inspired by it. So that showed Simon's true nature to collaborate. So when adopting the artist's perspective, I hope that you can remember to collaborate, to communicate, and perhaps not to compete all the time. Simon just recently opened the 14th factory in LA. It's an enormous project, 150,000 square feet, where over 10 artists collaborate and there's over 14 different installations. Simon has gained international acclaim with this project, something that might have been a lot more difficult for himself had he done it all alone. Similarly, there's an undeniable beauty that comes across when over 230 galleries gather in Hong Kong every year for Art Basel each and every month. So, to action with what you have, to change your perspective, and to collaborate. These are just a few observations that I've made over a very brief career. And I hope that you can somehow make your own. I challenge you to go to a museum, to go to a gallery, to go to the class of your daughter who might think she's an, an artist one day. Because artists create, and when they create, it's not always rational, logical, or linear. Rather, it's more often than not sporadic, different, and communal. And when they create, it's really up to us to learn from these creations, to look at what they're creating, to adopt their mindset, and turn it into practical creativity for us to use in our daily lives. So once again, I challenge you to go to a gallery, to visit your friend who might have an artist studio on the south side of Hong Kong, to visit a gallery, or even to explore Art Basel one more time on your own without any inhibitions. Because true creativity, innovation, and seeds of growth 
All products of the artist's mindset exist in all forms, shapes, and sizes, even in a chocolate chip cookie-shaped dog drawing. Thank you.